Hello, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Clank Zoker. Welcome to another My Thoughts On. And today, as promised, I'll be talking about Shrek Dos. Shrek 2. Well, I... Well, I mean, Trolls World Tour <clears throat> is getting quite close to its digital release on Monday. And since I talked about the first Shrek, um, it makes sense for me to talk about this sequel. This came out in 2003. Um, I think this was two years after the first film. Uh, the first film was a huge, huge hit. And then they made a sequel, which is just as, which is equally just a big hit as the rest. Um, oh no, not two thousand. Sorry, not two thousand and three. Um, came out in two thousand and four. Um, this film has all of the remaining casts from the first film: Mike Myers, uh, Eddie Murphy, uh, Cameron Diaz. And you've got some new people in here too. You've got some new actors, new characters. Um, this film was pretty much a, just like I mean, just like the other two film, uh, just like the lo- um, just like the last film. It was a big hit with critics and audiences, and I believe it did pretty well at the box office. I mean, how else do you explain it has like freaking two sequels, a spin-off, and a TV show? And a couple of shorts and a ride, and it became a meme. That's not very funny. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's been a long time since I'm since I uh, seen this great, great sequel. But how does it hold up? Well, this is directed by Andrew Adamson, uh, Comrade Vernon, and Kelly Asbury. You'd probably know that name because he. He's actually the director of Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron... Cimar... 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 Cimar Another DreamWorks film. He also did Nomeo and Juliet, Smurfs, The Lost Village, and Ugly Dolls. So, I mean, how can you go wrong with a director that seems... seems to know what he's doing, but Judging from his previous animated films, I don't know. But at least they got Comrade Vernon, uh, you know, because he's part of DreamWorks. And they got Andrew Adamson, who I believed directed the first, uh, directed the uh, first um, Shrek. And I think I am correct on that. So, what happens in Shrek 2? Well, this takes place a few years after the events of the first film. Uh, Shrek, voiced by Mike Myers once again, is now married to Fiona, voiced once again by Cameron Diaz. And she's an ogre. I mean, I would say that's a spoiler, but come on, I think everyone should know what Shrek is at this point. They both go on their honeymoons, and then... They've been asked to return to Far, Far Away, which is basically like Hollywood in a way, because the sign, you know the right, you know the Hollywood sign. It just says Hollywood, and I think there's like a little tower area here. I'm not sure, but they have one, but it says Far, Far Away. They head there, and that's where uh, Fiona's parents live. Um, Harold, voiced by John Cleese, and. And uh, Julia Andrews, who plays the mother, and I forgot her name already. And they're both pretty indifferent about their daughter being an ogre. And married to an ogre. And so Shrek thinks that he doesn't feel... He doesn't feel like he belongs there. And he feels like going there is a bad idea. And Prince Charming, voiced by Rupert Everett, was actually the one who was supposed to rescue her from the you know from the castle and the dragon and to kiss her true love's first kiss and all that and from there the film i'm not gonna lie i mean i love the first film but this legit gets better not only does it have better comedy it has a better story 
The story is very well executed. It has heart. It has great execution. It has great jokes, great gags, even some great pop culture references and references to movies. Usually animated films just kind of... Whenever they do something that's a reference to a film, they, it's kind of like, get it? See what we're doing? They're doing it in a way where it becomes obvious. This film kind of does it in a very... I mean, I know all the most of these references, but they do it in a very subtle way. And again, with the modern, with the modern, uh, you know, with the modern stuff and the fairy tale stuff, it all mixes together. And I would say this makes it better. There's a scene um, where Donkey, Shrek, and Puss in Boots, voiced by Antonio Banderas, they get caught, and the way they film it is kind of like a cop show. Another one I can think of is they go to. Um, the fairy godmother, uh, voiced by Jennifer Saunders, and Harold go to this like Burger King uh, drive-through, which is very funny. There's a lot of mo- there is a lot of uh, modern references, but in a in a universe that's supposed to be about fairy tales, it works. It's modern, but it fits quite well with fa- with the fairy tale element, and that's what makes this film even funnier. It also has songs as well. I mean, how can anyone not hear Funky Town and just think of Shrek 2? I mean, that's I mean that's kind of the thing with me, but... Um, they have very recognisable songs like Funky Town, they have I Need a Hero. But I don't know. It, 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 like I said, the world feels... It feels recognised and it feels fitting, and I wouldn't be surprised if these songs were part of the universe. So it makes sense. The plot is very more is more funnier, it's more dramatic. It's more on the relationship between Shrek and Fiona, one depending on the other, one thinking that they don't belong there. One might have a few might have to make a change here and there. You you know that. Um and I'll admit the story, while predictable and at times can be a bit stupid, can still pay off. It can still be more funnier and it and it gets more interesting, especially with the third act, which is probably the best thing about this entire film. I mean, I love this film as it is, but good God, that third act. Oh boy, that was quite a ride. And you can tell that you know, uh, Vermin, Asbury and Anderson, they're having fun directing this film and the actors and the writers, everyone's really enjoying making this film and putting it all together. And it shows because it is a really engaging and really fun story. I mean, the first film story was simple enough, but this one just gets more fun, more fun, more experimental, well, I wouldn't say experimental, but they put in some more jokes that are I mean, there are quite a few for adults, but there are some great pop culture references. There's some great movie references. It's funnier, dramatic. There is a great twist in the film that involves Shrek and Donkey, and it's really funny, and it is one of the... God, I just love the story. I think it is a really well-executed story. And when they introduce new characters, they are introduced with comedy and build-up, too, and that's also great. So... Well done, guys. You actually created a pretty, I wouldn't say almost original, but great story for Shrek 2. Animation. Yes, I think the animation has improved. Not by much since this was 2004, but it still looks great. The characters we all know and love look the same and they look great as always and they look slightly better uh the new places they go to like far far away the poison apple um all these different places look visually interesting the gags the comedy works the action scenes are fun and exciting um the new uh the new characters like puss in boots uh prince charming uh fairy godmother they all have the I don't know, they all have these really unique and great-looking designs that make them interesting. 
And yeah, the animation does look a little bit dated, but unlike the first film where it did pretty... It did date kind of badly. This one, only a little. It actually does look better compared to the first film. And I love the, the animation in the first film, but again, this was the early 2000s, and the animation for 3D wasn't quite as breathtaking as it is now. But at the same time, it's DreamWorks. They have great-looking animated films, and this is no exception. Um... Yeah, that's all I can really say about it. The anima the animation still proves that DreamWorks has what it takes to be on par with uh, P Pixar. I mean, they're not like that nowadays, but at least their animation looks interesting, unique, creative, funny, and great. And that's all I've got to say about that. Characters and acting. Oh boy, the characters here have... I mean... Shrek, Donkey, Fiona, they're still just them. They're still just their fun loving selves. We've got new characters as well, as you may know. Probably the most popular one would be Puss in Boots. He's easily the biggest highlight of this entire film as a character. I mean, I love all the characters, but Puss in Boots is just. He's really funny. He's really charming. He's very helpful. And Antonio Banderas' performance is. Fantastic, and I will get onto that in a bit. Uh, Donkey is still as funny as ever. Shrek is still funny. He's still stubborn, and you can tell he still loves Fiona and his plot with Fiona and and um, and with Fiona's father not accepting them as ogres gets interesting. These characters get more and more interesting, and there's more development onto them, especially Fiona as well. She's more. She's more likeable and more ch uh, charming in here. Speaking of which, Prince Prince Charming, whose role in this film isn't very big until the next sequel. He, he's quite funny. He's not too annoying, but he's funny and like well, not likable, but he's likably douchey enough. Um, who else have we got? We got Harold, voiced by John Cleese, uh, Fiona's father. I think he's really funny, and he does play a big part in the film. Same with, same with Julie Andrews as uh, Harold's wife and Fiona's mother. I think they're both great supporting actors. They're actors, characters, especially one scene when they're arguing over when when Shrek and um, Harold are fighting over dinner. When I say that, I'm pretty sure you know what scene I'm talking about. Other characters who have returned from the first film but don't play a big part until the third act. Like you've got Gingerbread Man, you've got the Three Blind Mice, Three Little Piggies, you've got, Pin you've got Pinocchio, you've got the Wolf. And in the first film, they didn't play a big part, but in here, they're, they do have more screen time, and, we're, and whenever they're on screen, they're, <laughs> they are hilarious. They're still funny, charming. Just memorable. Um, who else have we got? Uh, we've got uh, Fairy Godmother. Um, she's a really great villain. I think her plan makes sense. And I think she's memorable, funny, and just a great villain. I'd say probably better than Lord Farquaad. Uh, you've got some other characters in there as well. I'm, I'm trying to think who else. That's pretty much it. It from what I can remember, but but again, the characters are all memorable. They're all likable. They're all great. They're all funny. I like all of them, and the voice acting helps too. Mike Myers, great as Shrek, of course. Eddie Murphy, Cameron Diaz too. John Cleese is excellent. Julie Andrews is lovely as. As always, Antonio Banderas is great as Puss in Boots. Uh, Rupert Everett is super, super funny as Prince Charming. Uh, Jennifer Saunders is great as Fairy Godmother. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, uh, we got, oh, I, I just, I just remember, I, I just remembered. Uh, Larry King is actually in this film as the ugly step, uh, stepsister. Oh my god, he's funny as well. All the acting's great. 
the characters from the first film have grown. They have been better. They are still funnier. They're still great. The new characters offer support, great comedy, and um, are quite useful and play a big part in the film. So I say the characters are the heroes that we need, uh, with the exception of Fairy Godmother and Prince Charming. On a side note, um, this film actually, I don't know if you would call it a musical, but it does have songs. There's the Oscar-nominated song, Accidentally in Love. You've got I Need a Hero. You've got the memorable Funky Town. I don't know why. The songs seem to kind of fit with the with the with the film's theme and what it's going with. And yeah, they're a bit modern, but they do fit very well into this story and world. And Harry Gregson Williams' score, no John Powell, I'm afraid, is great as ever. Okay, I prefer the first film, but with this sequel, I don't know. I like them both equally. But with the sequel... This is probably one of the great examples of how to make a sequel better and great. Shrek 2 is quite possibly one of the best DreamWorks films out there, with a better well-crafted story, better animation, better characters. The old characters are still funny and have new development. The voice acting is great, the songs are wonderful, and the music uh, score by Harry Gregson Williams is beautiful. It's well directed too, well written. You can tell everyone was having fun with Shrek 2. Um, if you're a fan of Shrek 1, I highly recommend you watch uh, Shrek 2. It is one of the best animated sequels out there. And I mean, I know Pixar and... <sighs> yeah, Pixar make great sequels, but so do DreamWorks. Well, I mean, with Madagascar... Three? No, Madagascar 2 and 3. Shrek 2. How to Train Your Dragon 2. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. I think that's a... Oh no, The Comfy Panda are sequels too. So, it's not just Pixel that can make great sequels. Um, DreamWorks can as well. And with Blue Sky, eh, maybe one or two. Illumination, Despicable Me as far as I'm concerned. Oh, and Secret Life of Pets 2 is pretty good. Shrek 2 gets 10 out of 10. No questions asked. Okay, next up. Unfortunately, it won't be the two not-so-good sequels. It will have to be... Next up is Home and Boss Baby. And then after that will be Trolls to close the DreamWorks lineup for Trolls World Tour. So look out for Home and uh, that will be out tomorrow. So if you have seen Shrek 2... What do you think? Do you think it's good, bad, decent? Do you want to see it? Let me know below. And as always, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. And until next time, uh, bye for now.